up, guys? How are you, Scott? I'm doing pretty good, man. Long doing time no chat. Where, where are you calling from, anyway? I am on the sixth hole at the Grand Cypress Resort Golf Club. Wow, nice course. Yeah, it's pretty nice, man. I like Have you it. really heard of that course? You're just saying that. No, Kevin. dude, that's like one of the best courses. That's in Florida, right? Yeah, it's right here in Orlando, so right in the Windermere area. Oh, oh yeah. damn. Dude, I'm a big golfer. You know that. Yeah, so, uh, dude, how have you been? I've been doing good, man. I mean, just working hard on this record and trying to raise a son and and just just doing good, man, just having a good time. How was the uh, the writing process this time? Okay, because you only have to, you know, maybe top 10 million uh, yeah, right. record sales from your last How do you month. top that? You don't, well, I don't think. If, if I, I'm going to tell you the writing process, and you can take it for what it's worth. All right. Me and Mark wrote the album in three weeks. Wow. Is that faster so, or slower than, like, the previous records? Uh, that's, that's pretty fast. Yeah. You I got figured. mad skill. So we just, we, we didn't know whether we wanted to put the album out this year or put the album out next year. And, uh, me and Mark got on a streak and, and we just, the songs were coming and coming and coming. And then all of a sudden we made a last minute decision that, Hey, we're going to try to put the album out in November because we had, we liked all the songs we had, and, and we were like, let's just make a record, you know? And so we decided to do it, and we're actually still mixing the record as we speak. Uh, and when I get done here, I've, I've got to go to the studio and, and mix uh, with John and Kirk, who are the producers and mixers on the record, mix one more song, and uh, then we got to go through it again. Mastering, so we're still in the process of making this record. So then is it right back to work? I mean, you guys really haven't had that much time off, so to say. You know, usually people take some serious time off after a big tour. Well, he's on a golf course. <laughs> well, you know, I, 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 I get some breaks. Um, but th what I'm saying is, are you going right back out on the road? I mean, just for uh, right the record? In, J in January, we start our world tour. Wow. So, uh, you know, you know we, we like to put out an album every two years. I mean, that's, you know, back, back in... You know, the 60s and 70s bands, rock bands, were putting out an album a year. And nowadays, because of the worldwide, it takes about two years to work a record. And you get 14 singles off of one record. It takes <laughs> about two years. <laughs> I appreciate that, Kane. Thanks. What? That's, that's the Just simple truth. True. Yeah. You know? Thanks. Oh, well, yeah. is there any is there any hidden story behind the guy uh, that you booted out of the band that we might not yeah, know? Yeah, come that on. Just, is that just simple? Um, basically, man, it, it it was just, you know, the the routine answer, man. Just just yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, you I always expect answer, Scott just, Stat just, to give me the better than the routine answer. Though. Just just personal differences. Yeah. Just basically, that's what it boils down to: personal and musical differences. Brian's a great guy. I'll love him till the day I die. And uh, you know, I wish him the best. He's he's actually in another band now uh, that he formed. Is that and, the band uh, they they call Suck? Uh, no, actually, I, I, you I think instigator. Pretty, I, 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 I think they're uh, I think they're pretty good. They're called Grand Lux, and uh, and I think they're working on an album. And, and you know, Brian's a great guy. It's, it's just you know, we we just had some personal differences and and some lifestyle differences, and and uh, it just you know, I I can't say anything but good things about him. It just it just didn't work out. No, speaking of personal differences, uh, you obviously have this long-standing in the press feud with Fred Durst. Now, he's come out recently and said that... Well, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me clarify that. Okay. It's, it's, it's been the long-standing Fred Durst attack. No. Okay. Uh, You're right. All right. Yeah, you're, you're right. right. You're, no, he's absolutely right. I, I stand corrected. I, I've never even met the guy, never <laughs> spoke to the guy, never had a word with the guy. I've never even been within 20 feet of the guy. I don't even know him. So know, so. He's just a hater, man. He's right. But now, but what my point was, he's now he's going out and he's saying, he's made a statement that... Uh, you know, all of his feuds are done. He's tired of, you know, he's not going to fight with people anymore. Now is not the time, and he's burying all that. So I guess now after what Scott just said, well, it doesn't matter I, to you I, one I way think, or the other. I think Fred's a very intelligent man, and I'll give him that. <laughs> You're right. And, you haven't and, met him. And, and, <laughs> and uh, no, I, I think he's a very intelligent man, and, and I think he knows when it's the appropriate time to be politi politically correct. Right. Uh, considering all the events that's happened in the world since September 11th and the tragedy, tragedies there in New York, and, and we're all feeling it. And uh, I think uh, he's a marketing genius, and I think he knows what to say at the appropriate times to make himself look good. And uh, until Fred comes to me personally via phone or a sit-down meeting, it's just words to further advance his career. It doesn't mean anything. Wow. So uh, You're you know. telling him to kiss off. I don't no, 
I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, you know, if he wants to have words with me and he wants to reconcile, I've never said anything negative about the guy, and I won't. I mean, right. I, I like his music. I and let's be honest. I'm being honest with you. No, I, like I know you are. I talk to you at least. And, and, you know, until the guy wants to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one with me and clarify this, then all it is is is, is just marketing his name and, and, and trying to, to figure out a way to turn his his music that's basically about hate and negativity wow. uh, uh, around by, by bringing attention towards us and trying to rectify a band that, that promotes positivity and, 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 and realizes their civic responsibility and their responsibility on the world, you know? Where were you when, uh, when the uh, whole thing happened on the 11th? Uh, I was laying in bed with my son, and uh, I was awake before he was, and I was watching TV, and my director of security ran in and said, turn on CNN, and at that point, I saw the second plane hit the building, Yeah. and uh, to be honest with you, man, I started crying. Um, I woke up, my son, and I tried to explain to the best of my ability to a two-year-old, well, he'll, he'll be three in two weeks, but to the best of my ability, what was going on, and his response was daddy because I tried to explain to him about war at a three-year-old level because I knew that it was going to escalate to that and his response to me was daddy if someone ever tried to take our home we'll get them wow. and you know it was kind of profound for a for a you know two and a half year old to understand the concept of of basically someone trying to take your home away that's how he understood it it's hard for all of us and, to understand and, and that's and that's basically what's going on you know they're trying to put fear in the hearts of americans and they're and they're they're attacking our home and i think that it sucks that this had to happen to unite a generation amen and i also think that it sucks that it took this event to give the youth of america to have pride in our country again amen double mm -hmm. amen and uh you know it sucks that it happened but you know, all, I believe all things happen for a reason, and if it didn't happen now, it would have happened some other time. But uh, we've got a great president. He's 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 doing awesome. Uh, Giuliani in New York just blew me away, impressed me tremendously. Oh yeah, that. I think that's he, our next president. If you he, ask me. he just seemed like a great man. But you know, I stand firm behind our president and 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 what he says, and 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 I just I just uh, you know I just feel for all the families there. And uh, my foundation, with Arms Wide Open Foundation, has done as much as we could to try to help a lot of the children there that that were orphaned. There were there were, I believe, 500 children. Uh, I could be wrong on that number that were orphaned that lost mom and dad. Yeah, I think that's and, uh, right. My my foundation has done everything they could to to try to focus on that because you know a lot of money has gone to the the fire departments and the police departments and right. and other things and, and it's well deserved those guys are heroes man but uh, we got to remember the kids too right. and uh you know that's that was very important to me and and the director of our foundation cindy mcneely no, well god bless you for all that stuff that you're doing there the stores november 20th what my sacrifice is there a story behind the single or uh well basically you're going to hear this from every band member um we don't like to we we don't like to to give the story behind the song right. man, because we want every I hate listener asking, I just did. We, we want every <laughs> listener to you know a song means different things to different people it's how you hear it it's your background it's the way you've lived your life it's so the the reason I wrote that song could be completely different to someone else who hears it and how it applies to their life and I really, you know, don't don't want to divulge that because I don't want to change anyone's perception of what the song means to them. You know, I, right. if the song touches them in a personal way or they feel something from it, which is what we're all about, uh, then I don't want to do anything just to discourage that. It's like a painting. Everybody looks at a painting, they see something different. And exactly. the, artist, the artist doesn't necessarily mean anything. He just painted it. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. When I look at the painting, I just see paint <laughs> <laughs> i see food I'm not, never smart, no, I'm not smart enough to understand paint. Yeah, that, that, that's so funny because that's what i that's what i see I, I i was thinking my son was painting outside and and he mixes all the colors so it turns black <laughs> and, I, and, and i was like 
do I need to send my child to a psychologist? <laughs> yeah, right, right. All his paintings are black. You know, it started freaking me out, man. But uh, it's it's funny. Yeah, I'm just like you, Kane. I, I see paint. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott, dude, pleasure as always. And hopefully, when you're you know back in town for the for the tour and for the record, for the, hopefully maybe you'll do some sort of maybe an in store or something. We'll talk then. And maybe we oh, can have definitely. a sit down with Fred Durst, just like the mob does. We'll get the two big music guys together and have a little sit down. <laughs> there you go. I think you that'd know, be great. I'll, I'll come to that meeting with peace and an open heart. But, God bless uh, you. That's he's, awesome. He, he's going to do the talking. All right, man. Thank you for calling. So, I appreciate uh, it. God bless your, you guys and your city, and, and stay strong up there, and, and uh, our hearts and minds are with you guys. Good, cool. luck. good luck on your golf game. Thank you, sir. Thanks, right. Scott. Bye. Have a great day. Have a good one. Bye-bye. All right, here's the world premiere. Creed's new one, Off Weathered, which is in stores November 20th. This is my-